Good evening, Ape Nation. Guys, what's going on? It is Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. And today, we saw the market make a nice bounce back based off some news. AMC today closed up almost 10%, just under 1950 a share. GME followed almost right in tandem, up 8%. 126.16 was the closing price. If you clicked on this video and this is your first time to my channel, I'm a retail investor. I have a heavy stake in AMC. I believe in the MOAS and I report on the news that affects the market. No dates, no times, no prices. <clears throat> and tonight we're gonna to discuss two issues in the news that had a big effect on the market today, I think. And that is Russian troops pulling back from the border of Ukraine and possibly delaying this invasion that everyone thought was preeminent. And we'll talk about Justin Trudeau freezing bank accounts and cryptocurrency for the protesters in the Freedom Convoy. But before we get into any of that, cue the speeder. All right, guys, let's get into this. So today, the Russian Defense Ministry said it had begun returning some of its troops to deployment bases after training exercises near the Ukrainian border. And it seems as though the market was watching that and following it closely, and that maybe we're heading into a cool-off period of this geopolitical tension that has been scaring off investors for the past two weeks or so. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Konishkov said troops who had recently been posted to Russian southern and western military districts, which share a border with Ukraine, had completed their drills and have already begun loading onto rail and road transport and will begin moving to their military garrisons today. In this, in this article I pulled up from CNBC, Ryan Dietrich of LPL Financial said, de-escalating tensions between Russia and Ukraine are helping overall sentiment today. This isn't the only good news. U.S. COVID cases are now down 80% from the January peak. Another sign the reopening will be moving forward. We also today got PPI data. And just in case you're not aware of what PPI data or how it differs from CPI data, basically PPI data measures inflation from the viewpoint of the producer, whereas CPI data measures inflation from the side of the consumer. And that number came in pretty close to what the estimates uh, were. <clears throat> so that good news, along with the Russians announcing that they were pulling some troops back, put a little bounce in the step today of investors. I have looked into the pullback from Russia, and so far, the only reporting that we are getting right now that this pullback is eminent or has already started is from the Russians. I haven't been able to find anything from NATO or the U.S. In fact, the AP is reporting that the U.S. has not verified this pullback yet of the troops near the border, so I guess we're going to have to wait and see if NATO and the United States can verify that. Hopefully, they do, so that uh, Joe Biden can calm down on the rhetoric and stop scaring the shit out of everybody. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. I <laughs> yeah. agree. And we still are not out of the woods yet. Uh, but it seems like we did get a little bit of a bounce for investors today to get into the market. Okay, guys. So let's talk about the insurrection going on right now in Canada. So yesterday, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, long may he reign, uh, enacted the Emergency Acts, which is a federal implemented law that went into effect in 1988. At least it was drafted up to be used in cases of emergencies. And no doubt about it, right now, there is an emergency going on in Canada. Uh, this fringe minority of people with unacceptable thoughts has been allowed to run amok. And I wasn't around for Pearl Harbor. I was around for 9-11. But this is something else on a whole different level. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to play you a clip from what was going on this weekend. And before I roll this clip, just pre-warning, this footage could possibly horrify you. You 
can receive a free meal, irregardless of what faith you're from, what caste, creed, religion, doesn't matter. It's about the community kitchen, we all eat as one and humanity's equal. So the Seva concept, helping the community is what we're practicing here today. We're here alongside the truckers in the fight for freedom and we're doing our part from the Sikh faith. I know, I know it's shocking, so I'll give you guys a second to try to recover from what you just saw. Why is the Massalorian talking about this? Why are we discussing what's going on in Canada right now? How is it affecting anything that possibly we could be involved with? Well, let me tell you. This article from Coindesk talks about Trudeau enacting this emergency plan. And what is it exactly that he is implementing with this emergency act? Well, he's taking away all the funding for the truckers. Basically, anyone who's donating to them is going to be called a criminal, and they will seize all monetary uh, donations made to the truckers and the convoy. That was from Trudeau and the Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland. That's a shitty last name for uh, the Deputy Prime Minister of Canada right now. Christia Freeland? Huh, wow, ironic. Banks can immediately freeze or suspend bank accounts without a court order and without fear of civil liability. In addition, the government is broadening the scope of Canada's anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing rules to now cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment services their providers use. These changes, said Freeland, cover all forms of transactions, including digital assets such as crypto. And it says here that they had raised more than 20 Bitcoin or almost a million dollars for the truckers. The organizers have shut down the fundraising page and are asking all to stay tuned about the next steps. And guys, the reason I bring this to your attention and even report on it, if you think this is the last time that we're going to see the government try to attempt to seize funds, whether it be crypto or bank accounts, in a so-called democratic society, I think we're sadly mistaken. Because I know personally, I don't want the government being able to come after my cryptocurrency or my bank accounts and base that action off of me peacefully protesting something I don't agree with. Think about it as retail investors, if they said, if you go protest against the SEC, we'll freeze your bank accounts, we'll take your crypto, we'll go right into your BlockFi or Gemini account, shut it down. It's a scary thought. And the fact that this little dictator thinks he can do this and get away with it is a problem going forward. And so I think it's gotta be talked about we got to open dialogue, make sure that that never is able to happen in this country, the United States of America. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. It's getting late and this video is getting long. As always, guys, thank you for the likes, the views, the comments, my new subscribers, my OGs. I appreciate each and every one of you. Tomorrow night live stream, 9 o'clock, 8.30, somewhere in there. We're going to talk about my meeting finally. We're not going to get sidetracked. So I hope you guys can join me and thank you for everyone who showed up on Saturday. Common Sense Investor for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Everyone who commented and liked, thank you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. We're here to break the wheel. This is Ape Nation. I'm the Massalorian, and I'm out.